Hi, uh, my name is Dennis Hall, 10-time uh, U.S. national champion, uh, three-time Olympian, uh, world silver medalist, uh, or world, not world silver medalist, world uh, champion, Olymp or, uh, world bronze medalist, and Olympic silver medalist. Uh, today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you through a core workout, which is... Uh, Something that I've been working on, uh, I kind of, me and a buddy, developed a program and a system on how to build uh, wrestler strength. Um, so it, it's going to be a tough workout. Focus is a lot on center of gravity, control, and being able to uh, be stable. So it's a great way to uh, train. And I think uh, you're going to find out it's, it's a lot harder than what it looks like. Um, a lot of static and then we go into three inch movements and we go into hops pops crawls and, and different motions so you'll see just follow along uh what i'm trying what we're trying to do with this program is get as many muscles firing at at one time so you know think about wrestling in general if uh anytime you're executing a technique the more muscles you got firing and working uh the more efficient you're going to be. When when more of your muscles are engaged, you have less opportunity to get broken in a different position. So um, right now I'm going to start out. We're going to get after it and get some work done. Uh, you should be sweating definitely pretty quick. So I'm just going to step back here where you can see me. Right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I'm standing up just regular. I want to take my feet out a step to both sides. And then I'm going to turn my toes out at a 45 degree angle. I'm going to get in a base squat right here. And now from here, just put your arms straight out. Your back, you want it straight. So I'm going to turn this angle so you can see. See how my back's straight right here? You want your knees over your toes on both sides. So just bring your arms out right here. Back straight. We're just going to hold. We're driving our feet into the mat. And that's one of the big mistakes that a lot of wrestlers make is when they're wrestling and they're in their stance, their feet are light. So make sure uh, you're driving your feet into the mat. I'm squeezing my arms right here. So we're going to stay here for a little bit. Keep driving your feet as, as much as you can. Keep that back straight. So we're here. As you can tell, I'm starting to shake a little bit with my arms. As I'm squeezing, I'm trying to engage my upper body as well as my lower body by driving my feet. Right from here, we're going to change our arm positions. You can see that you're getting different angles on your shoulder work right here. So keep everything flexed. Keep working hard. From here, we're going to do a three-inch squat. It's going nice and slow. Three inch squats. Slower you go, the more control you have. Feel how your uh, weight in your feet kind of transfers a little bit. You want to try and keep all that weight going straight into the mat for stability. Now when I go down, I'm going to bring my elbows in and I'm going to do a fly. So we're here, we're activating those upper body muscles at the same time we're hitting our legs. Getting as many muscles firing as possible. Normally I keep my head neutral, but since I'm in this position, I'm turning my head over my shoulder. Otherwise it'd be right here. I like to go to failure. Keep flexing in, keep your legs driving into the mat. Some of you probably broke, that's okay. Shake it out. Remember to keep your knees over your uh, feet. Not exciting, but it's hard work.
All right, you want to shake that out a little bit? Just want to see. Comments, uh, I'm blind, so if I'm squinting, uh, it's okay. All right, now we're going to go to another position. I call it the bear crawl position. What I'm going to do is I'm going down on a mat like this. I want my knees about shoulder width apart right here, okay? Hands are right underneath my shoulders. I got a slight bend in my elbows, okay? Now my toes are going to be driving into the mat. When I go up, I'm going to push with my hands, and I'm going to lift my butt up at the same time. So I'm right here. I want my back straight. Right now, you should feel a lot of weight on your hands. When you get up, try and drive your knees out a little bit. Hopefully, you saw my knees going out a little bit. Always hold for about 17 to 22 seconds. I believe that's when uh, all your muscles really start firing together. So right now I'm gonna go to the right three inches, hold for five seconds, and I go down three inches. Hold for five. Now I go left, three, I should be centered. Left, three, up, three, right, three, now we're going to go the other direction, left, three, down, three, Right, three. Right, three. Up, three. Left, three. Now you're sad. All right. Shake that out. You might want to walk a little bit just to get the legs flowing. One thing, when you're walking, instead of looking down, try and keep your head up. That will straighten up your posture. I know a lot of wrestlers from being in our stance, our shoulders are hunched forward. We want to open them up and get them back, create uh, good uh, mechanics. So, next position I'm going to do I call it starfish, and it's, uh, this one sucks. I'm just giving you a heads up and a warning. Right now, I already got a pretty good sweat going. Um, so I'm going to lay on my back. I'm going to just walk it out a little bit. A little bit longer, give you guys a little bit of a break. Shake your arms out. The thing about this, the more muscles we get uh, working, and learning how to fire them, when we hit attacks, we're going to be that much stronger and that much uh, in better position where we're able to finish. So, next thing is going to be called a starfish. So, we did the base squat, which was the first one. We did a bear crawl, which was the second. Now, we're doing a starfish. So, on the starfish, I want to have my legs. I'm going to move here so I know I'm in the video. Legs pointing back, their, their uh, toes are pointed back to me. I'm gonna lay back here. And the other thing is you can, on stuff like this, sorry, but you can use bands in your arms if you want. If you wanna make this workout 10 times tougher, right here, pull here. You can use different grips on it, underneath grip right here, and that curls. I mean, there, there's a million different exercises from these positions. 
So I'm gonna go to my back. Uh, when you're doing a starfish, right here, feet are uh, pointed out. Arms will be back here. I come up, my shoulder blades are up off the mat. Toes are pointed back to me. My quads are firing, everything's working. Calves, everything. Shoulder blades up off the mat. Reach back with your arms. Keep pulling on whatever you have. Otherwise, you can make a fist and do it that way too. Or you can put five pound dumbbells in your hands, two pounds, water bottles, I don't care. Now we're gonna get heavy on our left hip. Keep everything tight. Go back to right hip, nice and slow. Working on body control. Back to center. Now we're gonna lift opposite hand, opposite leg. Cross connecting our body. Hold for five. All right. I was putting my glasses on so I could see. All right, guys are liking it. They're watching, which is good. Um, all right, we did three of the exercises already. Next, we're gonna go to a Superman. Superman, it's the way you guys always do it anyway. One thing, when I'm in a Superman, I'm trying to stretch my arms out as far as I can. I like to get my fingers wide so it gets my forearm working. If I just put my hands out like this, forearm's not really engaged. So spread your fingers wide when you're in the Superman position. Okay? So I'm right here. One, one thing I do is I point my toes. I'll get it in the video so you can see it better. My toes are pointed to the wall behind me. Right here's my Superman. Try and get your thighs up off the mat. It will help. So, just feel a lot of your weight right above your hips. Now we're gonna try lifting our upper body and our legs three inches. Keep your arms extended. Up a little bit higher. Down. Three. Keep those fingers and hands reaching forward. Down three. Now we get heavy on our left hip. Keep those toes pointed. Go back to center. Slowly go to your right hip. Back to center. All right, last position. I'm gonna show you another position after, but um, last position. 
we got there's three three positions you can do uh, but for today I'm just gonna do the push up plank position okay you'll see what uh, is involved in a push up plank the other thing is a lot of these have movements in them too so you're moving you know you'll see I'll do a little bit of movement with the push up plank so you can see it so hope you guys are sweating as much as me Just gonna walk it out, shake it out a little bit. Whew. Hopefully you guys are feeling like you've been in a gym for an hour already. I know when I lifted weights, uh, when I was competing, you know, I, I'd be in a weight room and I'd feel like I feel right now. So hopefully you guys are feeling the growth and the strength that you can get by working slow and, and uh, holding positions. So now we're going to Push up plank position right here. Hands are right outside your shoulder. What I'm doing is I'm driving my toes into the mat. I gotta shake my legs out because I'm spazzing a little bit. But I, I drive my toes into the mat. Right now I want my arms at about a uh, 135 degree angle at my elbow. Drive your toes into the mat. Weight you should feel on your hands. You want your back as straight as you can. So from here, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move opposite hand, opposite foot. Keep your legs locked at the same time. I'm driving off my feet when I'm moving. Legs locked. Small movements with your hands. Now we're back in original push up plank position. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to pop one, then two pops in a row. Two. Now we're going to go three. One, two, three, four. Try getting the five. One, two, three, four. So, you know, right now we've been working out probably about 15 minutes. Hopefully you guys feel the strength that you guys can gain when you're leveraging your body right and, and uh, using a mat. This is a workout that you can do anytime by yourself. Doesn't matter. You can do it on carpet. You can do it on the grass. You know, it's a hell of a workout. Um buddy of mine and I uh, created a website. I'm going to straighten up the video, hopefully. But uh, we created a website. Um, right now, uh, I'm going to show you something. These are blocks right here, 10 by 10 inch blocks. You push into the material. This material I had designed the purpose that I had the material designed for was a wrestling dummy. I wanted a reaction. So when when you pull on it, uh, it, it reacts just like a human body. So we, we developed the material, uh, poured a dummy a couple times, just got a look, got too expensive. Um, hopefully somewhere down the road, I'll be able to get that dummy out. But when I push on the material, the material's pushing back in like a 360 degree uh, angles. You know, when I push in, it's trying to throw me off center. So I use these blocks a lot during the workouts uh, when I'm at home by myself. So 
But uh, we have a website. It's uh, spikefst.com. You can do the 15-day challenge on there. I think it's $9.95 a month. You can work out as much as you want. Your whole family can do it. They can use the, use the videos. Hell of a system. Huh? And then uh, what I'd suggest, if any of you guys like what you did today, is go on, uh, check out spikefst.com. And uh, if you like the workouts, get the 15-day challenge and a daily workout. So, um, but here's another position. I just want to show you another position. You know, you can use pillows, put a couple pillows in between your legs since you want to have the block or even uh, like a rubber ball that kind of put you can push in on. So what you're going to do, sorry, is you're going to put the ball, if there's a ball, it would be in between your knees, toes pointed back to you, and you're, you can push on the ball with your hands, keep your shoulders up, push in with your knees, and this one is rough. So you're here attacking this, working a lot of these muscles that we don't get to in wrestling. We get, we get to our quads a lot, but we don't get our, what we call the inner triangle. Um, another simple exercise right here, hands out on your knees, toes pointing back so your calves are fire. Push with your hands into your knees, push your knees out. Right here, back up off the mat so you're engaging your core. So that's a, that's a, called the turtle. I don't know, that's what we named it. And then the other thing that you can do is just planks. Uh, not, um, right here, full body plank right here, hands wide. Hopefully you can see me, I'll scoot back a little bit. Hands wide right here, feet wide, come up right here. First, and just hold. So you get the general idea. But uh, a lot of this stuff on Spike FST is, is without any instruments. Some, we have maybe a band that I, I was pulling on earlier. We might have five pound dumbbells. We might have a 25 pound plate. So um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the workout. Uh, just a simple way that you can stay in shape or uh, keep working, you know. Keep working out and, and get your body stronger. Um, right now I wanna talk a little bit, okay. For some of you guys out there, what what is the definition of strength? I'm going to give you what, what it is. It's, it's the, strength is your ability to resist force. So you got to build all those muscles in your body that can resist force. You know, power, you're, you're using your power when you wrestle, you know, to, to move something. Okay, but, you know, your strength is your ability to resist force of your opponent or whatever's pushing on you. So, you know, this program right here is great for building true strength because you're anchored to the ground, okay? I want to talk a little bit about the stance right now. Um, basic, what I've, I've, I've done is I've broken down the seven basic skills biomechanically. So right here, stance, just regular, fit, uh, like you're standing up, going to go for a walk, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my each foot out just a, one small step out now from here, okay, if I'm in a squared stance, I'm gonna turn my toes out just a little bit right here. That's my square stance. If I'm gonna go to a staggered stance, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive towards the leg of my non-lead leg. So I'm gonna get weight on that and I'm gonna take a small step forward. And now I'm in a good staggered stance. Notice my left foot Right leg's my lead leg. That's one where I'm stepping, okay? But from here, notice my left foot is angled out right here, okay? 
If that foot's forward, guys, it's going to create a lean forward, okay? So you want your back leg, if you're in a stake or stance, stance, you want it angled out. So when I get to here, okay, notice when I'm in this position, I don't want my chest over my knee or my knee over my toe. One of the things that I believe is, is wrong is a lot of coaches will tell you to be light on your feet. Well, if I'm light on my feet, where's all my weight? All my weight is on my toes, okay? And then I only got one direction, and that's kind of a funnel-shaped direction. So when I'm in my stand, notice one thing too. When I'm in my base squat position right here, okay, look what happens. What, what am I in now? I'm in my staggered stance. So um, just good solid base is super important. So one thing that, that will help you help your athletes, and I'm just gonna grab four pound dumbbells. Right here, I'm in my stance, have the dumbbells in right here. After about 10 seconds, I want you driving your feet into the ground right here. Slowly bring your arms out, okay? Keep them out here. The stronger we are with our arms away from our body, the more stable we become and the harder we become to beat. The only way I can stay in a good stance is by driving my feet into the mat when, when my arms are away from my body, because otherwise I'll get front loaded. So, um, stance is absolutely critical. Um, one thing I didn't talk about really is when, when you're teaching a stance, a lot of guys will be here. As soon as this, this knee comes over my outside of my foot right here, okay, my, my motion and my, my uh, center of gravity has changed. I'm not in that grade of control my center of gravity because the weight's on my feet, on my toes. So when, when you're teaching a stance, try and get them to get this hip open. And it's hard because a lot of guys ain't, ain't got the inner strength right here, which is really important. I'm gonna go back to this back wall. I'm gonna show you an exercise and you guys do it at home. I wanna see who can hold it longer. You guys are me. You're gonna see what I'm talking about, about our hips being weak as wrestlers. So I'm going to this back wall. Foot's about foot away. I'm gonna bring my toe straight up right here. Bring it up as high as you can. Shaking that one out. That, that's a uh, tough, tough thing. I, I've done that with my uh, wrestlers in my youth club, even my high school, and some of the college guys that I work with, and they all struggle in that position. They have a hard time getting that foot up high. You know, probably a lot of you at home were only able to get it to about right here. We got to open up those hips and be able to get that foot up. So. Next, one thing I want to talk about is when I transition, when I'm stepping forward, when I'm moving forward, what I do is I drive off my lead leg to my back leg. I get stable on my back leg so I can move my front leg. When I want to move that front leg, I drive my weight, or back leg, I drive my weight to my front leg. Small step, right here, here, small step, okay? That way, you always have one base of support that is heavy into the mat, keeping you grounded and keeping you centered. And I know a lot of guys, when, when they're wrestling, they take a big step right now. Okay, look how far my chest is over this knee. If a guy pulls me that direction, I'm in big trouble. 
So try and help your athletes understand it isn't the quick big steps, okay? When I'm moving forward, when I'm stalking it on my opponent, it's here, now it's here. It's just quick feet, here, moving in. Always centered. My feet are only get, getting about three inches apart. So if you look at my footwork right here, I'll make sure I'm in, in the position. I come here, look at this foot, how much it moves. It didn't move that much. Now I get weight here. I'm back to my, my original stance right here. Here, back to my original. Now I'm back to my original stance. So it's, you know, when you're moving in your stance, you always want one foot anchored heavy. You don't want to take big steps, okay? Next thing I want to talk about is uh, level change, okay? When you, when you guys are right here, when you're, when you're in your stance and you do a level change, I want to drop down and drive my hip up right here, okay? So when, I, when I'm hitting the level change, I'm dropping right here. I'm driving my hip forward right here. There's my penetration step. So it's really important to drop that hip and, and drive that hip forward when you're penetrating. A lot of guys, when they penetrate, one thing that is uh, done wrong a lot when, when I'm here and I, I go for my level change right here, driving that hip. Now when I drive, when I go to my knee, I'm pounding this knee into the mat to engage my core. One thing that a lot of athletes don't do is they're not leveraging the mat for strength and stability. So you have to really drive whatever part of my body is touching the mat. I'm using the mat. I'm pushing. Now I'm stable in my shoulder. If my hand's just on the mat, I can be ripped out of position easy. And it's no different when I'm in a penetration position. Knees in the mat, foot's in the mat. My body is tight right now, okay? And I have my guys in my club doing this position. They just make fists. Once they get to their uh, penetration, they make fists right here. They're driving their knee. It forces you to get your hip forward. If, if I'm not driving my knee, look at how there's a little crease in my hip. Right now, that means these muscles right here aren't engaged. So when I'm here, they're engaged so I can move and react. So a little bit on a, a penetration step, a little bit on just a good position when you get in on a shot off your pe penetration step. You know, a lot of it is, is you gotta build up those muscles uh, when you do get in shots. How many times when you're coaching, do your kids get in this position right here and they took a shot, come here for a second. They take a shot, I'm gonna spin you this way so they can see, okay? You take a shot right here, but maybe you didn't set that guy up and you didn't get him out of position. You didn't break his center of gravity. He starts sprawling as I come in and we end up here. Where we end up here, okay? If I get to this position, I cannot let my butt get to my ankles, okay? Hand goes down and I'm getting strong. I'm using this, this hand pushing into the mat to lift him up. Okay, best thing is when you get in on a shot, if he does sprawl right here, okay, is post and drive. Post that hand, don't go to your elbow, don't go flat, okay? If I know my center is getting beat, I gotta get to stable position. Stable position isn't laying on my stomach, it's post the hand, head up. Okay, one more time. Right here, he sprawls on me. I know I'm getting beat. Head up, okay? When I repenetrate, I slide the knee that the hand's posted and that other foot comes up. Okay, one of the things that drives me crazy as a coach is when we hit our repenetration. Got some hair or something, okay? 
when we're here, he sprawled out on me. He sprawled right here, okay? Number one, okay, I'm gonna knee slide the hand, uh, the leg that um, my hand's posted. So that knee slides hard. Now, what a lot of guys do is they bring this back leg up to here, and then they reach. I didn't improve my position there. The back leg's gotta go deep so my back gets straight again. My post hand does not reach for the leg until my back is straight. I might have to do this knee slide three, four times, but I'm gonna stay after it until my back gets straight. So, one more time. He sprawls, heads up, right here, right there, finish. So, those are uh, some of the things that you guys can do just to build strength, you know? One thing, give me a, a 10 pounder. You got a 10 pounder over there? Just one, yep. So when I have kids in club just holding a lot of positions to build that strength because you know what, if you ain't in a position, you never build the strength. Slight bend in my elbow, pushing into the mat right here. Knees driving into the mat, that's engaging my core. Toes driving, it's engaging my calf and my legs. So I'm right here, because my hand's on that backside of his leg. You can't even turn it right here. And just hold, this sucks. So you just hold position. This is how you build strength, guys. Pushing into the mat with everything. Anything that's touching a mat is driving into the mat to give you the resistance, to give you the strength to, to resist the force of your opponent. I think in wrestling we don't talk about that enough and it drives me crazy. Um, probably about five years ago before I started uh, working on this stuff, I was getting burnt out in coaching. It was driving me crazy. I, I couldn't understand why kids couldn't even, you know, I'd show them a double leg. Come here. I'd show kids a double leg right in good position right here. And they, they'd be here or they'd be here. You know, you got to put the kids in the position long enough where they'd start building muscle memory, you know, and, and building the ability to resist force. So... Um, and I did, that's just a very common position your kids are in. We got to get kids stronger. The problem is nowadays, think about it. What are kids doing? They're either on their computer, look at my shoulders. See how my shoulders are hunched forward or they're on their Xbox or Sony PlayStation doing this. Where's my shoulders again? Hunch forward. I'm not strong there. Okay. We got to get those shoulders back. If they're playing video games here, okay? One thing I suggest is if you're, you're on this as an athlete and you're playing video games, every time you die or whatever in your video game, do a 30 second hold in a push up plank, bear crawl, uh, base squat, starfish, or Superman. You wanna know what? You're gonna get a lot stronger if you do it. So um, hopefully you guys are getting a lot out of this uh, so far. Right now, I want to talk a little bit about first contact uh, when you're competing. Because first contact, if your first contact is wrong, it's going to be tough to be a good guy. A good guy's going to use it against you. So, right here, he's in his stance, I'm in my stance, right here, okay? When, when, I, when I make contact, guys, notice I go back, I step in right here, I load my back foot right here. Okay, lead leg, arm stays down, I'm here, hand into him. So, but this, my, my lead leg arm comes up quick. It almost looks like it comes up the same time, but it, it's just a microsecond shorter. So, I'm in here, okay, when, when I step to him right here, I step in right here. Now when I make contact, it's up right here. 
I don't want my elbows turned this way right here. Yeah. So when I come into my opponent right here, I'm here, look at my level change. Hands right on the inside. I'm not grabbing here, because now my arms are extended more. Hands inside. I want to get him up and lifting, lifting him right here. So if I can lift my opponent, what am I doing to him? I'm destroying his center of gravity, and he's gonna have to react one way or another. If he lets me straighten him up, up completely, I got a pick single. So if I'm in, I made my first contact and I'm lifting him, there's my shot, okay? If, if I get him up right here and he doesn't like that, see that back leg, chest is over that knee, I'm gonna take him that way. I'm gonna move him. So a lot of my wrestling is, it's not based upon what I wanna do, it's based upon what my opponent does, okay? I'm cooperating with my opponent, I'm not trying to control him because reality is if, uh, Dylan and I are wrestling right here. He can't control me, right? Okay, I can't control him. Right now, if we're wrestling, I want to pin myself. I can drop to my back so he can see right here, and I can pin myself, and he can't stop me from pinning myself. So why do we think we can control our opponent? Our opponent is constantly fighting what we're trying to do. If you guys don't realize that, I, I don't know what to say. But every time you're in a tie-up, I got my inside tie right here, okay? I got my inside tie. Left hand is heavy, right hand is pushing, okay? Notice there's two, two forces, uh, two directional force. I'm pulling with one hand, pushing with the other. Why am I doing that? I tell you, okay? Look at, look at his body position. When I pull with my hand and I push, look at his spine, okay? His spine is twisted, okay? So natural instinct, stay, stay there for, stay there. Don't move, okay? My, my thing is, when a guy's in this position, his body is naturally telling him to get back to center. What center? His stance. So I can almost assume he's going to fight that direction. Okay? How does that feel? You like that? No, it hurts. No, it sucks. It hurts. It, it's, it's horrible. But that's why I, I, whenever I'm tied up, I'm doing two directionals with my hands. I'm pulling one way, pushing another. I might pull one and, and pull the other. I don't know. But my hands are always creating a problem for my opponent. If I can use my hands right, it takes away any offense this guy has. Okay, you can move. How bad was that? It hurts my back. Hurts his back. Okay, think about it. When, when you're out, outside, not that we're all outside right now with this lockdown driving me crazy right now, but um, when you're outside walking, do you ever see guys, guys walking down the street like this, who is it that's walking down the street like that? It's guys that are drunk, okay? Most normal people walk like this with their head down, okay? What I want you guys to realize is your head is critical. You wanna keep it neutral, okay? When my head goes down, look at, look at my body right now. When my head goes down, what happened to my hips? So guys, if we ain't trying and we ain't uh, mindful of what our head position, we're breaking our own position by letting our head come down, okay? So when I tie up with this guy, I'm just gonna go over some simple hand fighting stuff. When I tie up with him right here, I'm pulling here, okay? What did he do? He gave me a, he gave me a couple reactions already, okay? Where's his right hand? It's on my elbow. What do you think his arm is doing to my arm? I'm pulling on his, what do you think his arm is doing? It's pulling back. If I feel that, I'm gonna step towards it, elbow it off, there's an angle, okay? We're gonna spin him this way. 
look at his other hand right here. If, if, if he's just kind of controlling my elbow right here, I can drop right here. There's an attack, okay? One thing that kind of drives me crazy is when, when I break this guy's position, a lot of time we go to another tie-up, and you'll see what I'm talking about. When I'm right here, okay, and, and I elbow down right here, I elbow down hard. I elbow down and I get to here, we'll come to the two-on-one, okay? Don't do that, don't waste that energy because as soon as I get to here, he's gonna throw another defense at me, right here. Now, see how I didn't go to the two-on-one on that side? I went straight in an attack, even though I may not get that second attack right here. I may not get it right here, but I got a center of gravity because he had to respect my attack. If I ain't constantly threatening a realistic score, he doesn't have to respect anything I do. And by, by the way he's defending, he's telling me, okay, we're in here, right here. I feel him pulling back right here. So I'm gonna attack this. I'm gonna go towards that leg. What's he gonna do? What's he gonna do? He's gonna circle. There's my snap. Okay. So biggest thing, when any time, give a overtime, right? Right there, okay? I got, I got uh, my tie up right here, but he's creating distance. Why, is he, why do a lot of wrestlers do this? If you watch youth, they are great at this type of stuff, but they forget it when they get older. Okay, I have my youth working inside tight. The first thing the defensive guy does is he does this, because he doesn't like being pulled out of position. So I have to teach my youth to be good partners and grab the arm so I can actually work on moving you, moving my opponent. So when he arm drapes right here, okay? When he arm drapes to try and keep me away, I can't pull on that arm. I'm not gonna get, I'm not gonna beat his position. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna take a small step back right here and a hard level change. So anytime a guy's pressuring where you can't pull on his arm, where this hand can't pull, all you gotta do is drop. Catch, there's a shot. Yeah, I did a lot of different attacks from the, from this position. I'm in here, I'm trying to pull, I'm trying to wear this guy out. One guy that was phenomenal at controlling his center was Lee Kemp, okay? That guy would frustrate the heck out of a ton of guys. Lee, uh, three-time, I believe, three-time world champ, and uh, I had the opportunity to work with him, and, and uh, you know, a lot of great stuff from him. But he was really good at thumb blocks right here. So guys couldn't, couldn't get an attack because this hand is going to block so he can stop. Anytime I feel a thumb block right here, I'm coming over the top. I'm, I'm not releasing and trying to go to a shot. I'm going to come over the top. Right now, his thumb's in jeopardy of getting broke. So I'll do it to this side. Okay. I'm inside, he's thumb blocking me, or maybe he's inside with, with the thumb blocks, just trying to frustrate me right here, controlling my, my position so I can't attack, I can't move him. Because if I go for a set, what does he do with this arm? He pushes it, so I can't get to it. Now I come to the head, can't get to it. Meanwhile, as I'm trying to create pressure, all he has to do is when my hand comes up, drop and attack me right there. So we got to learn how to beat those types of things. So I'm in here. He's got a thumb block. All I'm going to do is I'm going to tap the near arm so you can see. All I do is I dr drop my elbow or my forearm at, at the joint right here. From here, my outside arm is going to come in, and I'm going to drag that. But what I'm doing that you don't see when I'm, when I'm in here trying to beat it is I'm getting heavy into the mat. Heavy into the mat as I'm moving them. 
So outside tie, he's thumb blocking. Right here, release. And if I'm right here, I can, I can change my hand and go outside tie right there and break it. I don't care, but we gotta learn that when a guy's thumb blocking you, we can't get through that. So I'm in my stance right here, I can't get through it. I catch it, run to my single, right there. So a lot of things that you gotta understand when it comes to that type of tie. One thing that was pretty uh, interesting in my career, I was down in uh, Mar del Plata, Argentina, uh, warming up for the finals of the Pan Am Games. I had the Cuban in the finals. I'm warming up and Dave Schultz is working out with uh, Coach uh, Bruce Burnett. And I remember just watching Schultz. He was working on single leg finishes. He told Burnett where to put his hands, what to do with his hips, his feet, everything. He did that one position for an hour. That changed where, the way I trained. I, I started adapting that mindset. I'd, I'd go into a tie-up and I'd say, okay, I'm going to explain it a little bit now. But um, off my two-on-ones, you know, a guy's probably got about 10 things he can do off off your two-on-one. So I'm going to show you how I started to break positions down more and go into uh, scoring based upon the one time I saw uh, Schultz uh, just working out before a, a final, uh, before my finals. So if I got a two-on-one right here, okay? One thing, when you, when you have a two-on-one, don't grab his bicep. What I do is I drive my elbow or my forearm in his armpit. From here, I attach my chest to his arm, okay? From there, I can have wrist. I don't care how you grab it. A lot of the foreigners will grab this way and twist. It, it might grab it uh, right here. If, if they grab it this way, they're twisting it this way to eliminate any power he's got in his arm. I learned that the hard way where I couldn't get my hand away from those guys. You know, so I had to figure out how not to let them get there. But if I'm here, if I'm in this position, first thing I want to do when I got a two-on-one is I want to drive in. Because what's he going to do? I don't know what he's going to do, but I'm going to react off of what he's going to do. If I'm lifting him right here and, and he doesn't like that, do one reaction, do a reaction. See how he, he came to that wrist right here? Okay? If I'm wrestling uh, folk style, I'm driving through. I'm going to drive that hand. Why? Why do I drive that way? Because how do you get, how do you get my wrist? How do you uh, clear? I'm here. I'm lifting him. He wears all his weight right now. Step forward if you can. Step forward. See? See? How uh, this leg is straighter than the other leg, you might not be able to see it, but it, there's more weight on this foot, so I'm going to drive through it right there, all the way to a takedown. Okay, I have my two-on-one right here. Give me a different reaction. Right there, see that? Okay, from here he's pushing on. Right now he's created that distance. I'm gonna come above his elbow, step to the body. Sorry, we'll get back to position. I'll do it from right here, you'll see, see it better. Right there, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come above his elbow and I'm driving his elbow in his face. There's a body attack right there. Okay, how many, how many college coaches tell the guy, grab the high hand? Okay, he grabs a high hand. He's in a stance, he grabs a high hand. Instead of worrying about that, change it, pull it backwards. If he grabs, if he grabs that high hand right here, okay? All I'm doing is crossing his arms in the shot. But the thing is, a lot of times when we grab that, when he grabs a high hand, we're, we're just trying to hold on to it. Pull it down. See how he crosses his arms? There's a single. He'll let go of that high hand. Okay? He might grab my wrist. 
He's in a stance, he, he might grab my wrist. I come across right here, see that? Right there, pull down, gets an attack. All I'm trying to do, get on it again. Right here, stick, turn this way. Right here, as I'm coming across right here. Getting weight on that outside foot so I can drive to it, okay? He grabs an elbow. He grabs an elbow. There's a headlock. He grabs my elbow again. I don't like that. I'm coming across with my high hand, grabbing his elbow. Bundling that up. Now I can go into a shot from there. He puts his head down and circles away. Puts his head down. Right here, high hand, snaps. Okay? Now you get a little bit of, you know, how I think. And, you know, wrestling is a sport where uh, you got to work counterattacks. If we're not working counterattacks, you know, you're going to have a hard time. You know, um, the other day I got a paper by, uh, Alexander Corellin. It was on counterattacks. He's he had 197 sources for his paper. And, uh, it was very interesting on counterattacks. And he was saying, we don't drill enough counterattacks. And, uh, I, I totally agree with him. If I don't drill a counterattack to your defense, you know, it's going to be hard for me to score if I don't continually work through all the blocks. You know, in, in wrestling, I'm going, to, I'm going to be the first guy to make contact. I'm going to get my hands on guys, and then they're going to react. They ain't going to let me do what I want to do. And I think as a coach, we got to slow down to teach, and I think we teach way, way too many moves. We don't teach position anymore, and I know position isn't, isn't a ton of fun to learn, but I'll tell you one thing. If you don't have position, you don't have anything in this sport. You know, a lot of times guys are giving up their center of gravity, and that's why there's so much scrambling. You know, the, the one thing I'm really emphasized with the kids that I work with is my job is to break my opponent's center of gravity. Once I have his center of gravity broken, he's out of position. That is my time to attack. If I do not break his center of gravity, I'm not attacking. I'm going to keep fighting. I'm going to keep wearing him down, and I'm going to beat the hell out of him until I, until I break his center. And a lot of my attacks or how I break his center of gravity is, is off of my opponent's uh, resistance to what I'm doing. But if you never train those angles and those things, you know, you never see that. You're, you're only open to what, what you're looking for not to what, what is actually there. And I think in, in, uh, in wrestling, we gotta really work on it. And the interesting thing when I was reading Corellin's paper was they had, they had specific drills and skills that they used for counterattack. And then I, I guarantee you that a lot of the skill set they used for counterattack and was um, positional based. It was controlling your own center of gravity. Cause if I don't, if I'm, if my center of gravity is broken, if he's got me out of position right here, he's got me out of position, pull, right here. The only counterattack I can do is right here, but my hips are never gonna get to him. I'm dead because he's got my position broke. So a lot of their, their uh, um, skills, I'm very interested. I'm gonna try and figure out the skills that they were working on for the counterattacks. You know, I, I just, uh, you think of it this way, you know, there, there's a ton of scrambling going on in college wrestling and high school wrestling. You know what? If you fight hard enough and long enough, you're gonna break that guy's position, then he doesn't have an ability to counter you. But if you, if you get frustrated and you don't have patience, you're gonna take dumb shots. So. Um, big thing I think you need to work on is number one, your stance. Number two, let a guy pull on you. You know, I, I work on, I just work on keeping my center. Push, snap, move me. 
right here. I'm working on staying in position right here. Hands, hands are always tight, right there. Always staying in position, ready to battle, ready to take what he's giving me, using his force. You know, the one thing I, I'm looking for when I'm wrestling is how far is my opponent's arms away from his body? Because if his arms, come here for a second. If he's wrestling right here, okay, look at his chest. Chest is over his knee. I can move. I can break his center and I can reattack. So, well, my hour's done. I hope you guys got a lot out of it. Um, you know, I, I know with the way things are right now, um, it's tough to get good workouts in. I strongly encourage you guys to, uh, number one, build your body at this time. Right now, there's no reason why we can't get stronger and get more strength. Strength is your ability to resist force. I'm gonna plug it one more time. Uh, the website that has all these workouts is uh, spikefst.com. Uh, get the 15-day challenge and, and the daily workout plan if, if you liked it. Um, otherwise, position is key. If you control position, you got, you're in a great opportunity to score and dominate. So thanks a lot. Uh, have a great day. Um, if anybody's out there that uh, liked what I did today and, and you know, I'm, I'm looking at book camps. I know right now ain't a great time for me. Um, I run my own private club uh, up here in Wisconsin. And But uh, if anybody is interested in possibly bringing me out in the future, uh, go to my Facebook page. I think my contact info is on there or just a uh, friend request me. So have a great day. Stay safe and uh, hope, hopefully see some of you guys soon. Bye. Hey, Coons, how do we stop this thing?